Good morning, everyone. We give God praise for today. We give God praise for this first Sunday in June. Thank you all for coming and worshiping with us. We are here at St. John's African Methodist Christian Church just to magnify the Lord. We give God praise. We give God praise for another day. We don't take anything for granted. God bless us to be in this place, in this space. So right now, we've got this morning's announcements as Sister Brenda Brown's comments. Good morning. Announcements, joys, and concerns of the church. Prayers are requested for Brother Lakedrick Taylor in the passing of his sister, Lanisha Taylor, and for Sister Lucy Thomas in the passing of her husband, Mr. Richard Thomas. Please pay, play, pray for the Taylor and the Thomas families during their time of bereavement. Join us for prayer at St. John's Church Prayer Line, available every Tuesday morning at 615. Please join us free to join the call. The prayer line number is 515-604-9300. That's 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. Access code 418-515. Join us for Friday night live services at 7.30 p.m. Log on to Facebook and connect with facebook.com slash roosevelt.williams.315. That's Friday Night Live Prayer Service. Join us for the conference call Sunday School every Sunday morning at 9, 10 a.m. The call-in number, 515-604-9300. 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. Access code 418-515. For more information, contact Iris Simmons. St. John's youth are invited to join for the teen Sunday school class via Zoom each Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. For more information, contact Terry Brown. Join us Sunday evening at the altar prayer line every Sunday evening at 6.15. Call in number 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. That's Sunday evenings at the altar prayer line. The Montgomery Selma District Sunday School Convention will be held virtually on June 12th and 13th at St. John's. And St. John's is the host church. For more information, visit the website at MontgomerySelmaDistrict.org and contact Cynthia Underwood Thomas to register. We'd like to thank, we'd like to be excited today for our graduates of 2020. We have some college graduates. Jasmine Johnson, who graduated with her bachelor's degree with honors. Congratulations, Amen. Jasmine. We also have some postgraduate degrees that we're excited about. Raymond Dawkins graduated from uh, UAB's dental school. He graduated uh, with a dentistry degree and a master's in business administration. Amen. Yay, Raymond. Raymond will be going on to do his residency at pediatric dentistry at Yale New Haven, Yale University. Congratulations, Raymond. Henry Terry and Emory Kidd both finished their postgraduate degrees. Yay for Emory and Henry. We look forward to seeing you in person and being able to congratulate you, knowing that all of you are going to do some big things for the Amen. kingdom. Happy birthdays for 13, 2020. John Knight, the 7th. Fanny Tarrant, the 10th. Hazel Underwood on the 11th. Regina Manuel on the 12th. Happy birthday. Pray, praying that God gives you a day as bright and wonderful as you are. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary to Dana and Juan Henderson on the 7th. May your marriage be blessed with joy, companionship, and happy anniversary again to, to you. May we remember to pray for our sick and shut in. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we just come first thanking you. Thank you for breath in our body. Thank you for giving us strength to get up for another day to praise your name. Thank you for the things we take for granted, like being able to take a breath, being able to see, being able to have our hands, being able, Lord God, to put our clothes on, have clothes to even put on. We say, thank you, Lord God. Lord, we come asking you to give us hearts of compassion and love so that we may show 
peace to all that we come in contact with, that we may treat people the way we want to be treated, so that we are showing your love to the world. Lord God, doing this unrest in every way, Father, we ask that you speak to this land, heal this land, help us to be who you called us to be in this land, salt and light. Lord God, help us to reach down and lift other people up. Help us, Lord God, to be mindful, to pray for those in authority so that we can have peace in this land. Help us, Lord God, to not look the other way, but to always be ready and able to assist and help others who may have a need. Father God, help us to think like you so that we act like you. Lord God, strip us of anything in this flesh that is not like you so that we look like you and we act like you. Father God, we want to even smell like you. We want your fragrance to be all over us. So as we even walk down the streets, as we go to the grocery stores, wherever we may be, people stop and say, who's that and what's that? And we can know a child of the most high God. Lord God, may we represent you in thought, word, and deed, in every act of our life. May it all be about you and not about us. Lord God, we come lifted up those who are bereaved. We lift up those who are sick and shut in. We lift up those who are in our nursing homes and the hospital. We lift up our essential workers, Lord God. We lift up every level of government from the president on down. And Father, we ask a blessing upon them that they seek you because you are the answer. There is no other answer. You are the answer. So Father, help us to seek you first in everything and have peace and know that because you are in control of all things, it is with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture comes from Hosea 11, verses 1 through 4. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The subtitle is God's Continuing Love for Israel. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. As they called them, so they went from them. They sacrificed to Baal and burn incense to carve images. I taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by their arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I drew them with gentle cords, with bands of love, and I was with them as those who take the yoke from their neck. I stooped and I fed them. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers the hearers, and the doers of his word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, R.C., for the reading of God's word. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for all that you do. Lord God, while we were yet asleep, you were moving by the power of your spirit. Lord, you were protecting me. Lord, you were healing. You were delivering you are shielding us, Lord, and we give you praise. Lord, we thank you for all that you do, all that you have done. Lord, we celebrate the fact that your son gave his life for us over 2,000 years ago. But yet, Lord, he lives even right now and sits at your right hand. So we thank you, Lord God, for just being awesome in every way. We thank you for being powerful, more powerful, Lord, than anything in this world. And we thank you for that. And we thank you, Lord God, that your power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, is available to us today. Holy Spirit, have your way. Move in us in a powerful way. Move across this world. Touch, heal, and deliver. Lord God, empower and strengthen those who are weak. 
So Lord, we thank you for victory on every hand. We give you praise for just inhabiting the praises of your people. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We bless you. We magnify your name. Have your way today, Lord God. In the master's name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Our seed read in um, Hosea chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. I'll continue reading, but I will be in the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. Matthew 2, 13 through 15. Basically the same thought, but a different dispensation. So I'm in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Out of Egypt I called my son. The title of this message is, Out of Egypt I called my son. I firmly believe that the beginning of anything, the beginning, the start, that initial phase of anything, the reason for that thing's existence and formation determines its life cycle, it determines its success or its demise. The beginning of the thing, in essence, determines the end of a thing. Through the providence of God, the Lord sustained his people through a drought by leading them to Egypt. By the hand and favor of God, Joseph rose to power and prepared a way for Israel's survival. What started out as a blessing, what started out as provision, what started out as uh, something good on the front end, later turned into fear, hostility, harsh treatment, and even slavery, because there arose a Pharaoh who knew not Joseph. 430 years in a foreign land, the first 30 years were a blessing, but the last 400 years, the last 400 years involved bondage, oppression, slavery, all types of cruelty. Does that sound familiar? God heard the cries and prayers of his people and sent them a deliverer in the person of Moses. God sent Moses. He was born a Hebrew, raised in Pharaoh's house, so, but he was born a child of God and God sent him after being uh, banished, if you will, if you will, uh, after running for his life to the desert, God called him back to deliver his people. Moses made all types of excuses, but yet and still God used him in a powerful way to bring deliverance to his people. So through a series of plagues and a series of um, um, just happenings and things that happened during that time, Pharaoh decided, after much persuasion by God, he decided to let the people go. And Moses let them through the desert, Moses led them through their whining and their complaining. Moses led them across the Red Sea. Moses led them to the land, almost yes. to the land of promise. And But Joshua brought them on in. So Moses was a leader of God's people. Moses was a deliverer of God's people. God used Moses to do a mighty work for him. But in Hosea chapter 11, it speaks of God's heart. God's heart toward the whole matter. So in Hosea chapter 11, God says, when Israel was a child, hmm. I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. And as they called them, as, the, as God sent the prophets to call people out of darkness into his marvelous light, as they called them, so they went from them. The more God's people called them, the more they went away from God. Uh -huh. They sacrificed unto the Baals, those false gods. They burned incense to carve images, did everything but follow God. But look at what God says. I taught Ephraim to walk. Thank I taught you. my children to walk. Taking them by their arms, but they did not know that I healed them. Hmm. I drew them with gentle cords with bands of love. I tried to woo them unto myself. I brought them closer. And I was to them as those who take the yoke from the neck. I delivered them. I brought them out. Yeah. I stooped and fed them. Yeah. I called them 
out of Egypt yes. into my marvelous life. God is calling us out so he can bring us in today. Amen. Now also in Matthew chapter 2, a very similar passage. Similar because God is still calling his son out of Egypt, but a whole new dispensation. Hmm. So at this time, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream and said, Arise and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Now this time you're going back into Egypt and you stay there until I bring your word because Herod is seeking to kill him. And you stay there until I tell you to come back that it might be fulfilled, that it might be filled up, that it might be fulfilled what Hosea talked about centuries yes. before. Yes. Out of Egypt have yes. I called yes. my son. Out of Egypt have I called my son. God called Jesus out of Egypt. God had to hide him for a time in Egypt until the death of Herod. But God called him out. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Now these passages are not just connected because they are similar in the way that they are versed. But they are connected because God is still calling Thank us out. Lord. God is still calling us to a yes, better way. Yes. God is still calling us to live right. God is still calling us to come out of those things that don't bring him glory, yes, honor, and praise. Yes. God is yet and still calling all of us out. Thank you, Lord. Now I believe this year, my Lord, my 2020 Lord. has been something else. Mm. 2020 has been truly jacked up. 2020, I believe that this year will not soon be forgotten. A pandemic of biblical proportions, wars and rumors of wars, disease and pestilence in diverse places, worldwide social unrest, racial, yes. racism, police brutality and racial tension in these United States of America. God is calling yes. us out. God is bringing attention to us, but God is also calling us out. Yeah, he's saying we need to get this thing together, but God is also calling us out. Out. Thank God you, is Lord. calling us out of hatred and jealousy Thank and you, envy. Lord, God. God is calling us yes. out of fear of one race dominating the other. Yes. God is calling us out of justifying our sin to suit our desires. God is calling yes. us out of making excuses for our hatred of other people God. and races. God. God is calling us out of thinking that we're better than someone else. Yes. God has, is calling us out of living ungodly lives and saying that it's okay because God loves me and God will forgive me. The devil is a lie. God is calling us out. Yes, God is yes. us out. He's calling us to live in a new way. It is not okay. God is not pleased with our living. God is not pleased with our giving. My God Lord. wants us, I'm not talking about money. God wants us to give him our hearts. He wants us to give him our attention. God is not pleased with how we're living and how we're giving. You all remember my opening statement when I said the beginning of a thing determines its life cycle, success, or demise. African Americans, now listen to me well. Now, when I said that, the beginning of a thing determines the end of a thing. African Americans were never really brought to this country to be citizens. Mm. We weren't brought here to be citizens. Yes. We were brought here to build the country. We were brought here to be slaves. My God. All right? Now, y'all hear me well. So, the only way for us to come up and the only way for us to come out is that we've got to get into God. Yes. Thank you, This Lord. place is not our home, yes. but heaven is our home. God is our Father. Jesus is our Savior. Yes. And the only way for us to come up, we've got to come out. Come out of living in a kind of way. Come out of acting and yes, living as if yes. we don't know God. We can't do what everyone else does. Y'all hear me? We've God. got to live according to God's word. We've got to live yes, right and walk yes. right and talk right and go to school and get an yes. education and love your wives and be faithful. Be faithful to everyone, but most of all, be faithful to God. God My is God. calling us out, out of Egypt, yes. out of the world, yes. out of sin. God has called his sons and his daughters to live in a better way. Yes. God has called us to be a holy people. Yes. God has called us to be called by his name. God has yes. called yes. us the tribe of Judah. God has called us to make a difference. Yes, God has called us to be different. Yes. God has called us yes. to be holy. God has called us to be righteous. God is calling us to yes. recognize yes. him in everything. Yes. God is calling us out to call us into a better place. So doing all this social unrest, doing all the protests and all of that, 
Do all of that. Social unrest is good. It's good to make your opinion known. But let us not forget the one who brought us over. Let us not forget the one who brought us out. Let us not forget the one who will help us to make a difference in this earth yes. realm. Without God, we won't make it. But with God, we are more than conquerors. Yes. With God, yes. we are more than enough. With yes. God, we are the head yes. and not the tail. With God, we are yes. victors and not victims. Hallelujah. With God, we can make it. Yes. Even through a pandemic. Yes. Even through police brutality. Yes. Even through those who don't like us. Yes. Even through those who don't want to have anything to do with us. Yet still, God is calling us Thank to live Lord. everybody. Thank God is calling Lord. us to do what we can for anybody because God is our Father. And we want to be his children and be like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is calling us to come out of Egypt. Come out of the mess. Come out of the worldliness. And be everything that he has called you to be. His children. Washed in his blood. Who knows who he is. I thank God. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God for what thank Jesus you, did over 2,000 years thank ago. You, Lord. Hallelujah. He went up on that cross so we can indeed be called out. So we can be called out to make a difference. So we can be saved. Had it not been for Jesus, we would be headed to hell in quick fashion. But because of Jesus, because of his sacrifice, because he made a way. Yes. And if we accept the way, the truth, and the life, we can come to God and be saved. Yes. So I give you this invitation today on this first Sunday in June. Want to give your life and your heart to Jesus. I'm not talking about just in word. I'm talking about with your heart. If you just say, Lord God, I am a sinner. Lord God, I need a Savior. I believe that, Father, I believe you sent Jesus over 2,000 years ago to die on the cross for my sin, for my stuff. And because I say this my, with my mouth, because I vocalize how good you are, and I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead, according to the word of the living God, I am saved. I'm saved to come out. I'm saved to make a difference. I'm saved, Lord God, to represent you, to be your disciple, to be your representative, so that when people see me, so that when people see us, they see Jesus. Amen. And we give God praise. So if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, why don't you just send a message or something or just, or just send me an email. That email address is revrmiiiaon.com. Private. No one will see it but me and I will pray with you. And we give God praise. Out of Egypt have I called my sons and my daughters. I've called them unto myself. Let's prepare our hearts for holy communion. And those of you who are in the Montgomery area, please join us in the Crampton Bowl at 1130. We will uh, give out Holy Communion. And right now we're doing our general confession. Okay, let's read together. Eternal God, judge of all humankind, we confess our need of you. We confess not only our many sins, but also our anxieties about the present predicament a health crisis on a scale so large as to be called a pandemic. We have never had such proximity to pestilence of near biblical proportions. Have mercy upon us. Give us grace to remember that perfect love cast out fear, wow. while also remaining vigilant against the cause of our anxiety. Today, we virtually enter a virtually empty temple with faint hosannas on our tongue. Let not our devotion die. We hold these ancient symbols of bread and wine, reminding us of the meal you shared with your disciples, a meal through which they and we should remember you. It was the night that you were betrayed by a disciple. You took the bread and wine and blessed them and made a sacrament. We once again consecrate these tokens, not as relics, but as reminders of your sacrifice of body and blood, broken and shed because of your great love at Calvary. Now in a different space, made sacred by our present purpose, we partake of the bread we sip from the cup. We feast on these emblems by faith, grateful that you are forever present with us. Emmanuel, even in a pandemic, healer, deliverer, blessed Savior, forever. Amen. We will not hold back our praise. Hosanna, hallelujah, amen. Together let us eat, together let us drink with thanksgiving, amen. Father, give you praise for this bread that was broken. Lord God.
God, your body was broken just for me. It's great. It symbolizes that very thing. for your blood, your precious blood that was shed for me, for all of us on Calvary's Hill. I take it now and drink it. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for this time to celebrate you, to commune with you. Bless us, Lord God, as we go forth to represent you, to shine brightly for you. Emmanuel, be with us as we go about our day and the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.